All right, welcome to a stiffness method example. In this problem, we're going to use the stiffness method to analyze this beam um, and figure out what the reactions are at um, A, B, C, and D. And this beam is this beam is 32 feet long. If I did my math right, 10, 12, 10. And it has three spans um, here, A, B, B, C, and C, D. Um, spans A, B, and C, D have a 9 kip per foot uniformly distributed load. And there's a point load P, or 20 kips, um, here on span B, C at 6 feet from either B or C. Now, when we start the... Oh, and um, I'm also going to say that EI uh, will just... It's constant, just to make the problem a little simpler. Uh, because we need to know, or we need to understand the concepts first, right? So before I start, I'm going to name these spans. I'm going to call span AB element 1, span BC element 2, and span CD element 3. And the very first step in analyzing um, a structure using the stiffness method is to determine the degrees of freedom. So I'm going to redraw the structure here without any of the loading. So we have a fixed support, a roller, a roller, and then a third roller. And the way we label degrees of freedom um, are we start while well, we do uh, left to right. right. We analyze the beam from left to right, and we do all rotational degrees of freedom first, um, then vertical ones next, and then horizontal ones last. And we do unrestrained first and then we do restrained ones next, okay? And so starting with left to right, we're going to do unrestrained rotations first. Um, here there's a, fixed, uh, there's a fixed end, that means it supports a moment, that means this is a restrained reaction, or a restrained degree of freedom. Here at roller B, we have an unrestrained rotational degree of freedom, so I'm going to call this theta1, and then here we have another rotational one, and that's theta 2. And then finally we have this um, here at roller 3, we have theta 3. And so we're done with all the rotational ones. Now we move on um, to unrestrained vertical ones. And since there are no unrestrained vertical ones, we skip that. Um, horizontal we're actually going to ignore because there's nothing here on the beam that causes a horizontal uh, reaction. So we're just going to skip the horizontal one entirely. Now we move on to restrained. Uh, again, we start with restrained rotational degrees of freedom. Here we have theta 4 at the fixed end. Um, and there's no more rotational restraints, right? So now we move on to vertical restraints. Um, starting from the left side, we have theta 4, 5, theta 6, theta 7, oh, I'm sorry, these are not thetas, these are deltas. Delta 5, delta 6, delta 7. And then finally, delta 8. Silly, silly me. Now, uh, notice that we have um, 8 degrees of freedom on this beam. That means our S sub complete later on in the problem is going to be an 8 by 8 matrix. Okay, just a little heads up. Um, the next thing we want to do is determine our stiffness matrix. And I'm actually going to uh, erase, erase this because we don't need it. Um, and I'm going to write out the stiffness matrix. Now, since we're only analyzing uh, rotations and verticals, uh, our stiffness matrix is going to be uh, 4 by 4. We're going to use k sub i is equal to 4ei over l, 2ei over l, 6ei over l squared, negative 6ei over l squared. Our second row is 2ei over l, uh, 4ei over l, uh, 6ei over L squared, 6EI, actually that's a negative 6EI over L squared. Our third row is 6EI over L squared, um, 6EI over L squared, 
and then we have a 12 EI over L cubed, uh, negative 12 EI over L cubed, and then finally uh, negative 6 EI over L squared, negative 6 EI over L squared, and then you have a negative 12 EI over L cubed, and then finally 12 EI over L cubed, okay? This is the matrix we use if we're analyzing uh, four degrees of element per element, or four degrees of freedom per element. So element one, which is right here, has theta four, theta one, delta five, delta six. That's four degrees of freedom, so we use this four by four matrix. All right, this is, a, this is given. Um, the next thing, um, since I said EI is constant, I can actually pull out EI here, and then all these EIs go away, right? Since EI is constant, we can just pull it out of the matrix um, from all terms, okay? So the next step uh, would be to find the K matrix for each one of these elements, elements one, elements two, and element three, okay? And uh, we're actually gonna go ahead and do that in the next video. All right, so see you then.